rain or shine, it's tomato time. And rain or shine, you need to harvest in the morning because that's when your fruits and vegetables are going to be the crispest, the juiciest, the sweetest. Isn't that right, Coop? All right, let's go. All right, well, I just harvested tomatoes two days ago, but uh, I have several again that are ripe and almost ripe. And I wanted to mention, we, we kind of had a discussion about this on my Facebook group page. When the temperatures outside are reaching above 85 degrees, it's honestly better for you to go ahead and harvest your tomatoes when they are just blushing. Take them inside. I put them in like a cardboard box or box lid, uh, not in the sunshine, and let them ripen. All right, for example, these right here. They're not completely ripe, but they're certainly ready to take inside. Same with this one. Let's talk a little more about tomatoes. Now, as I mentioned out yonder in the vegetable garden, once your temperatures get to be 85, 86 degrees, <clears throat> the tomatoes are not going to turn that beautiful red color on the vine. It's, it's too hot. The ideal temperature for a tomato to ripen is 70 degrees. So, when you have the very hot summer, you want to pick your tomatoes when they are just starting to turn to that pink blush. So let's talk a minute about how tomatoes grow and how they ripen. It takes about 40 to 50 days for a tomato to get to its full mature green state. And once it reach, reaches the green maturity, the green part starts to lighten that's often called white. I'll show you an example. Now this one had fallen out there off the, off the vine. And you can see, maybe, the top here is still a bit dark green. But on the back side, it's really starting to lighten. This one is even more white. See how much lighter green it is? It's actually even starting to get a little bit of a yellow tint. I picked this one uh, to fry for fried green tomatoes. Now, how do you know? There's a really easy way to know if your green is mature green, white, or still not quite mature enough. You can fry a dark green tomato, but it may not be very digestible because it may be way too acidic. With the light green tomatoes, however, the meat in it is uh, amelioable to, to frying. But the way to tell is to cut one open. So let me just cut this one that fell off the vine. Okay, I've got it cut in half. Do you see how we have the jelly-like substance here around the seeds? This means it is a mature green, perfect for frying green tomatoes. If it were still a very dark green, this jelly-like substance wouldn't be there and the seeds would be really easy to um, cut. So after the green tomato um, gets to be mature green, turning white, 
once it starts to turn that yellow and pink color, that is what is called uh, when it's breaking or it's called a breaker. And when it's a breaker, that is the perfect time if it's too hot outside, above 86 degrees, that's the perfect time to bring it inside, to ripen indoors. And my personal opinion, a lot of people say they're not as uh, flavorful, not as tasty if they're ripened indoors. I disagree. If you compare, it's anecdotal, but if you compare a tomato that's ripened outside at 95 degree temps, and it's not even very red, it's usually kind of a yellowy orangey color, to one that you have picked at the breaker point and brought inside to ripen in say 70 degrees, which is a perfect temperature for ripening tomatoes, um, I think the taste of, of it ripening at 70 degrees is far superior to when you have a really hot summer outside. Now, probably the two or three that I picked out there, this is really beyond the blush, the breaker point. But you can see it's not really red, it's orangey red. This one's same way, all three of these are the same way. I really didn't have any out there that were right at the blush um, stage. These had all gotten a little bit further along than that, but they're still fine. So what I will do now is put them in my cardboard box here, and I don't let them touch. Um, and actually, I have three tomatoes here that I had in my box that ripened in about four days. They can take longer. These are Cherokee purples. They always have green shoulders. The Cherokee purple variety does, but these are perfect. So they don't really have to stay in the box anymore. I can store them in the fridge. Some people don't like to do that, um, but they will last a little longer, maybe up to a week. If you store in a, the hydrator portion of your refrigerator where it's like, you know, 45, 50 degrees. So that's where I'm putting these. In checking the garden this morning, I have some tomatoes here that are at the breaker stage. So I'm picking them to take them inside. Where our temps here are 90, 95 degrees. So this is the stage to pick them. Here's another one. At least 10%. of the tomato is starting to turn pink to the pigment that it will be. Various stages of ripening. And by the way, the little ball boxes are handy to use for this too. Okie dokie. Well, I decided that I would do a, an instructional video from start to finish, probably breaking it up into maybe three videos on uh, preserving tomatoes. I've already done a, a video of how I like to do a raw pack of tomatoes and I've done that from the traditional method of scalding the tomatoes in hot water for 30 seconds and then the ice water bath and so forth and so on. And I have that video. But I wanted to show you an alternative because uh, unless you're growing a ton of determinate tomatoes that ripen all at the same time, uh, you're not necessarily going to have enough of a harvest of tomatoes to get enough to really can and do anything with them. So. Here's what I do. All of these tomatoes in this basket are ready to be put away, and I'll show you how, and then we'll move forward. Step one on a baggie, I'm going to write my date.
set that aside. Alrighty. All I'm going to do wash my tomato. Pour my tomato. And then on the bottom side, I'm going to cut an X. You don't have to go deep, deeply, except my knife's not very sharp. After that, plop it in the bag. Do that with all of them, and then I'll come back. A note here, this tomato is not quite fully ripened. I'd like to give it maybe another day. So I'm not going to cut this one because you've probably already figured out we're going to freeze these tomatoes. And if you freeze tomatoes, they are only going to be as ripe as they are when you freeze them. So I'm going to leave this one out for a day or two more. I'm going to seal this up. And put it in the freezer until they're solid frozen. And as you can see, I have others. Now we wait. So as I mentioned earlier in the video, I am going to be dividing this into three segments. Um, and this first segment is going to be on creating uh, tomato powder. So this will be the rest of this video is going to be strictly on that. I love the fact that you can do this, therefore using all of the tomato. The way to make tomato powder is using the skins of the tomatoes once you have removed them and then dehydrating them. Probably three years ago, I had saved up and bought the dehydrator that I really wanted, which was the Excalibur, and it is a nine tray. Now, when you buy it, of course, it comes with a manual, but I also have the dehydrator, the ultimate dehydrator cookbook by three people. Tammy Gangloff, Stephen Gangloff, Loff, and September Ferguson. Great books. So we'll pull out the frozen tomatoes and get started on prepping the skins and getting them onto the trays. See how many I need. Rock hard. Okay, our tomatoes have been frozen overnight in the freezer, and obviously they're rock hard. Now, when you freeze fresh tomatoes, you cannot thaw them and try to eat them 
like they're fresh because they won't taste good. <laughs> Freezing changes the texture as you might imagine and they are mushy. So you have to cook them at this point if you want to preserve them. Um, I had mentioned earlier that I like to do the raw pack of diced tomatoes, but that's when they're not frozen. That's when they're fresh um, and unfrozen. So the next step with these frozen tomatoes, you can do a couple of things. You can just let them thaw on their own, which might take about an hour. Or you can do um, a couple of different methods. I'm going to show you both of those. First way to get the skins off your frozen tomatoes is to just let them thaw out and then they come off very easily. If you're in more of a hurry, there's two couple things you can do. Number one, you can take your frozen tomato and run it under water, warm water, hot water. And work it loose. Now, as my skins are coming off, I'm gonna put them over here on my dehydrator rack. Now, running the water is not my favorite way to do it. Uh, number one, you're just wasting water. So, if I'm not uh, wanting to wait for them to completely thaw, I'll show you what I like to do. And this will be for part video number two and three, putting them in a colander. I have some water that I boiled and turned off a bit ago, but it's still quite hot. And I'm just going to pour that in my bowl here of tomatoes. See the hot water just loosens it up so much faster that it all comes off in one fail swoop. And I do take the time to go ahead and lay them out on the dehydrator sheets as I remove them. It's a lot easier to do it right then than put them in a big pile and have to separate them all later. I try to keep them where they're not folded over. First day of spring, and I just want to sing to everything that's moving, every single little thing. To them birds flying free. Fish in the sea, flowers and trees, every little bumblebee. I want to sing. Ooh, ah, mm, oh. To the kids playing hoops, going loose. shoes in my hand and my feet in the sand. I got 20 ducklings in a row like a little marching band. And they sing ooh ah To the couples in love And the seagulls above And any other living thing or creature I can think of I want to sing Ooh, I want to sing
five bags, I've got five trays filled with the tomato skins. Now to dehydrate them, I put it on 135, which is also what it says here on the top for fruits and fruit rolls. Uh, but the length of time is going to be mostly dependent upon how humid it is where you live. Here in East Central Alabama, it's very humid. So I kind of go the max amount. 12 hours is about what it takes for me. So probably somewhere between seven or eight hours and 12 hours, depending on where you live. You'll just have to kind of try that out and see. You want them completely without moisture and looking like leather. So tomorrow, We'll come back and finish up making our tomato powder. Thank you. 